Okay, so welcome to part two of our Yamaha VR5000. Uh, the chassis is out of the cabinet. It's actually just sitting on the cabinet. And based on our notes that we saw in part one there, our technician friend said he replaced a 4700 uh, microfarad cap there. And uh, yes, he definitely did. But apparently he only had an axial in stock when this thing was expecting a radial. So they did that loop around bridgey thing. That is, uh, functionally it'll work, but it's a little wobbly. I don't like that. Maybe, uh, to avoid spending any money, maybe we'll just put a bit of hot snot or something there to secure that so it can't move. Electrically, it's probably fine. This is our panel of switches and, um, pots. There's two rows. This is the upper row, and these push pull switches just aren't playing ball with us well. They're not disengaging. So I'm going to try just spraying some contact cleaner in each of them and working them a lot. And uh, then we got to try to get under this board. All right, you seasickness, you're going to go upside down. Let's see if we can get you go down there. Underneath here, there's the second low row down there, and obviously I can't see that. I'm seeing that via the camera. But there's two rows of those. So we're just going to do our standard pot cleaning procedure. And uh, we've got our Max Pro uh, pot cleaning products. We're going to spray them in there, switch cleaner, pot cleaner, click the daylight side of the switches, and see if this comes to life. Okay, so for the first time today, we are off the off the handheld or on the tripod and I just sprayed a bunch of the contact cleaner stuff that in these switches and pots so just get a little noise here this is supposed to be gain so when I pull it out we should get louder when I push it back in we should get quieter working correctly now. This says fat, so I'm assuming I'm going to hear a sound change. And I do. This is bright, so probably more hiss. I do. So, let's check for any scratches in any of these. No scratches. Okay, super. So, channel A, the one I can easily access, is in good shape. Just for fun, we'll check channel B. This one's still intermittent. Doesn't, don't know if that one does anything. Don't know if that one does anything. And none of these seem to be scratchy. That one is. This one is. Given a little bit of a turn there, now it's not. We're still going to try to spray. It. Okay, so anyway, we ran out of footage on the camera, so sorry for the abrupt cut. Um, top channel A seems real good. B is going to get the same cleaning treatment, and I'm going to try to snake the snake the uh, straw on the. Uh, cleaner around and see if I can get into all of the corners um, with the contact cleaner. If we have the same results, then essentially the only existing problems we found on the SAMP have been solved, and then we clean it, and hooray. Okay, I know this is just riveting content, so I've got it on channel B now, and without removing this upper board, I just tried to maneuver the little straw nozzle on my contact cleaner. Uh, and get in there and spray the switches for those three pots. So we'll check channel B's here because channel A is already passed. So this is boost. This is fat, which is I think a mid-range boost, and then this is bright. Treble boost. So those are good, and then these are not making racket anymore. So. 
think we're cool now. Let's just recheck channel A to make sure it didn't regress. Yep, seems good. So, the problems that this amp was showing have been resolved. So now essentially it doesn't have any more problems other than just needing a bath. So I'll give it a bath and then we'll take a look at it when it's all done. Uh, this does have a real spring reverb. It's a little short tank down here. So there's our short tanked reverb. And we have our big, big heat sink for our, I don't know, not so big transistors. We got this green one, this black one, and a couple of little ones over here. Um, yeah, so, no, two green ones, big green one. The green ones are probably the output, I guess. Um, yeah, so, looks okay to me now. I don't see that there's anything further I really have to delve into. So, we'll just uh, give it a physical bath, put the lid back on, and uh, give it a final sound check. Okay, so we're back the next day. I don't know if you noticed yesterday there were some holes here. Well, those were for screws to go into the chassis, and they were gone. Um, so whoever did the servicing on here before lost the two screws in the side. And if we're going to send this and give it to the parcel service, it's going to have to be complete. So um, for the safety of the old man. These screws are the closest I can find. These have a little bit of a round top with countersink where these are flat, but, um, you know, it's close. So I think that'll work. Um, I've got all the dirt and grime cleaned up on it. We're going to double check that it works again, and then we'll go do a sound demo. Okay, so I suppose it's time for a sound test. Um, I have the foot switch on here, so I can switch it from A to B. A is just kind of what I thought sounded like a clean tone. Um, Very clean, very warm. There's a lot of bass from this. Um, just simple 12-inch speaker. A lot of bass, which is which is cool because a lot of you know amps lack, and uh, it's easy to get this thing to like any extreme. If you take this like P2 equalizer, I mean we can pull the br I have the bright on a little bit, but I have the treble at half, so it's kind of like putting it at seven. Um, but like if I were to bring the EQ level up, I can. get a really bright tone. You know. Sounds like we have a surfer's reverb in here too. Oh yeah, it drips. And uh anytime I hear that kind of Yeah, cool. So that's that, and then I tried to put the gain up kind of on a high level, just so we can get an idea how much gain is in there all together. Um, not a ton. This isn't a huge, uh, you know, metal level gain amp, but it's got a decent amount in here. And of course I have to keep the volume modest for the sake of the camera. making up something. I don't actually have anything I want to particularly play at the moment. Uh, let's do this. And I'm sure we could probably crank, you know, let's try to pull the, let's add the fat boost or whatever to the... So it makes that 
am not real sensitive. So that should give us more mid, and then we can bring up probably a little bit more treble, make it a little brighter. Let's see what that does, and then let's try to, let's actually add, let's add a little bit more mid in there yet, too. so much you can play with. You can, you know, put the mids wherever you want them. You can put the treble wherever you want it. This is a really kind of a tweaker's amp. And if you were playing with two different guitars, you could, you know, set up two clean channels or a clean and a dirty or a, uh, one setting for bridge pickup or neck pickup. I, I can see the versatility here. I'm going to have to, you know, obviously play around with it before I find what really sounds great but uh, really, really neat. I like it. There you go. This is a Yamaha VR5000. Uh, came from the auction, needed a little bit of work, but not too much. And now it's working like it was intended. Have a great day.